Hello and welcome back to HB. So what you're seeing here is the recovered bits of a lost episode. Episode 16 to be precise. Due to a convergence of Windows updates and sound card driver shenanigans, I lost all of the audio for this video. Commentary, gameplay, absolutely every drop of sound. So, instead of slogging through this episode in silence, I decided to grab a few highlights and splice them together for you, since we did get quite a bit done in this episode. Starting out, you can see we have some corruption on the map to take care of, so let's get to it. Our first stop takes us down by the water, where I smartly try to grapple the pipe right in front of me without much success. So let's try that again. Now, this set of grapple points is going to take us to another energy piece, but otherwise it's of little consequence. Nonetheless, I'm going to take my time here, just in case. There we go. Now, this gets us within a couple of pieces of getting a fourth energy bar. However, it will be the only piece that we find in this episode, so enjoy, my little friend. Now we're going to be able to talk a little bit about combat with the Sprite Cloak. If you don't know, the Sprite Cloak decreases your maximum health, reduces the rate at which you regenerate energy, and greatly increases your swing speed. This is enough to get several hits off on slower enemies before they have time to react. Couple this with judicious use of the teleport stun, my favorite, and it can be quite powerful. Unless you're me and forget to use all the tools in your arsenal from time to time. This giant in particular gets a good couple of wax off on my dome, but I do manage to wear him down in spite of myself. It's worth noting that we have all but the final upgrade to the sword, and even with the increased swing speed, you can see that this giant takes an absolute pounding. But after a healthy amount of back and forth, we do eventually manage to take him down. After that fight, we'll have an opportunity to check out a vista and assess the situation from afar. Corruption, as it has previously, limits our movements quite a bit, so the path forward is fairly simple, but man, I never get sick of these views. Here will see me expertly avoid falling off this narrow bridge, and then immediately turn around and teleport off the other side. My reward for this graceful move is a long walk back up the cliff. As I said previously, our path forward is quite simple, as we're guided by the corruption to its nexus. And a short distance away, the caged sprite that will allow us to satisfy our eyeball stabbing fetish. Seriously, this guy really enjoys his eye stabbing. Little Sprite Man is going to get down there and create his trademark harmonic dissonance that somehow breaks through the corruption bubble and lets us complete our task. Now, this sword is more or less a blunt instrument without much of an edge, so we're really going to get in there with a blunt, rusty stick and give this guy the business. Ugh. After clearing the corruption, we're rewarded with a butterfly for our troubles. Thanks, game. Now that we've cleared the corruption, we're free to do a bit more exploring, which involves some light puzzle work and an extra monster to do battle with. Again, the Sprite Cloak gives us quite a bit of uptime in the damage department, to the point that I tend to get greedy and just lay into this guy until he pounds me in the face. That's alright though, we have more than enough hit points to tank the damage for now. After taking care of the aforementioned light puzzle work, we open the way to a new area where we have a few of these armored rolling fellas. These guys are some of the easiest monsters in the game. Unfortunately, we don't have any cliffs to lure them to a plummeting death, so we'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. These guys take a couple of solid charged fist attacks, so the slower energy regen here is less than ideal or it would be, except that the other two monsters are nice enough to wait until their turn whilst I finish off their friend. It sort of reminds me of an old kung fu movie where the mob of attackers wait patiently in line to get karate chopped by the hero. Yep, one at a time, if you please, there's plenty for all. Now, I've seen a couple of people get stuck in various parts of the game where the monsters bug out, and this area in particular is one of them, however, I was fortunate enough to get through this room without any issues. Oh, 
Alright, so now that we've dealt with the three amigos, it's time to give this thing up there a high five, and then witness the fruits of our labors. The lights are back on, and we're powered up and ready to go. Now, all we need to do is twist this knob up here and enjoy the show. This is actually the final piece of the puzzle that leads us to the Colossus over yonder. Once inside the Colossus, we are joined by a few sprites, and we gain access to another heart piece, which is enough to add another heart container, or at least it would be if our maximum health wasn't capped by the sprite cloak. Six appears to be the limit, but as you can see, it's more than enough to get the job done. Now it's just a matter of procuring the energy core. Here we have the final fight of the episode against a particularly heavily armored Brutus. I have a momentary lapse in memory and try to just punch through it, but we've seen this guy before, and he has a grapple point that needs to be addressed before engaging in melee combat. It's also a bit on the annoying side among the enemies that have these, but we manage easily enough here. As it happens, he's guarding two chests filled with peas, so we're well on our way to getting our daily value. We take a little detour here to acquire a heart piece that has been a long time coming. <laughs> Thank you, creepy spiked plant thing. And that's about it. It feels good to be back in the Dynamo Cloak, let me tell you. Yeah, our swing speed is a bit low now, but zipping around is more than enough compensation. Now, this is a shorter episode, but I do have a fully recorded episode with sound that will follow this up shortly. Uh, anyways, thanks so much for watching, and join me next time.